Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be going over Astro Ares versus PSG LGD. This is a game where LGD absolutely stomped and I specifically want to look at the nature's profit of Faith Beyond. He goes for a Vessel into Wraith Pack build, an item build that I think is very very cool. I've actually experimented with similar builds in the past and it feels incredibly strong on this hero. So I want to look at the draft. We're going to start with the draft. If you want to skip past that, you could go 3-4 minutes into the video then you'll just obviously watch the gameplay. But if you want to check out what I have to say about the draft, we're going to start with that and let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. So funny enough, uh, <laughs> I do want to cover, we actually see a Pudge first phase ban. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, well, actually, that's not really true. I can't believe Pudge is a good hero, but I can believe that he's strong based on his E being kind of broken. And I've mentioned this quite a few times now, Pudge is probably in the best place this hero's ever been in in its life, uh, which is... Cool. It's actually very cool. In fact, I love the current state of Pudge. I really do. Uh, do I think he could maybe be nerfed slightly? I mean, sure. But honestly, I, l I like the state of Pudge. I think it's a very fascinating hero. We see the Warlock Razor. Razor seems to be a very, very popular hero right now in Pro Dota. And the main reason why is because it, it's, it's flexible as a laner. You can put it in almost any lane. You can put it mid, safe lane, or off lane, and it's going to do well. Honestly, it also has very little bad lane matchups. Like, I, I honestly believe that. There's very few bad lane matchups. Even something like Nature's Prophet. While it is rough for Razor, the issue is even if you pick Furion in the Razor, right? If they pick up something like a Marcy, and then you have a Razor Marcy, the Furion kind of just feeds. And that can be the case even with Morphling, right? Morphling is this, this counterpick the Razor, and the reason why teams pick it is because you turn into the Razor and you Static Link him, and then you turn back into Morphling, and how Static Link works is you auto-attack during it, and that's good because Morphling has so much attack speed and damage, so it kind of allows you to attack move while, well, just hitting. You, you guys know how Static Link works on Razor. You just hit the entire time, and with Morphling's damage, you shred. However, the lane is really not that great for Morphling. I think Razor beats Morphling in the first few levels. I don't even think it necessarily gets that much better for Morphling later on. It doesn't have to, depending on how the lane has gone up till then. So I don't even love this response pick. While I think it is good in the game, I don't like... I think it's a very risky pick, basically. I think it's a very, very risky pick. From there, we see some pretty basic picks come out from Aster Ares and PSG LGD. The Earth Spirit with the Warlock, uh, pretty simple pairings here. Basically, Earth Spirit is really good with these two heroes. You have absolutely no initiation, practically no initiation with Warlock and Razor. Earth Spirit fulfills that. Also, Razor likes to play pretty defensive on the early creep waves because he's a ranged hero with low movement speed. And so Earth Spirit, you can take your Q at level one. We'll see if he does that or not in the replay, maybe briefly. But um, basically, you just like kick a boulder and, and boulder, uh, I think it's boulder smash, right? Yeah. Earth Spirit's Q does, I think, 120 damage at level 1. It's one of the higher level 1 nukes, and so it's really good at shoving in the wave. And this is really powerful with the Razor because it just puts the enemy in a situation where they have a severe creep disadvantage, and you can, like, really play up on it and, and get aggressive. So it's quite powerful. I honestly like this lane pairing a lot. A lot of kill potential as well, as, you know, um, Razor hits level 3 and Earth Spirit hits level 2. You combine those timings, you get kills. Uh, we see um, the Shaman come out and the Death Prophet. Death Prophet's going to be laning with a Tiny, Shaman probably with the Morphling. I will say I'm a little bit concerned about the Shaman pick. I'm not a huge fan of this hero. In a lot of games, it does give them like the Roche potential that they didn't have previously, which is good, right? Gives them a, a bit of objective in Roche, which is kind of why this hero is popular from my perspective. It gives you a very simple way to play the game because you have a Blink Hex, and then you can take objectives. So what is the downside of Shaman? Well, Hex is a channeled ability in the lane and in the game. Um, no Shackles is, right? And then on top of that, he's a very killable hero early on into the game because he's just slow and has horrible cast ranges. So he gets punished very hard by Earth Spirit if you don't get off to a good start. Like, you kind of need to dodge fights largely a Shaman unless you see him coming. But it's hard to get that initiation early game. And we see the Furion come out. I, I love this Prophet pick. I, I don't think you could ask for a much better game on Furion. 
to an extent. Uh, I don't think you met up too well against Morphling in the mid game, even to DP. But the thing is, you're probably going to have a good lane matchup because you're good against Tiny and lane. He has no armor. You're good against Shaman because he's a slow ranged hero. You're good against DP because it's a ranged hero. And you're good against Morphling because it's a ranged hero. And none of these heroes kill Treants. So if the game comes down to split pushing and, and having to shove waves, you have this wild advantage uh, in the in the Prophet and his shard. They don't have a hero to deal with it. And this is personally also my favorite game to pick Fury on. These games where they show that, hey, we don't have a hero to deal with Trance. We don't have a hero that clears waves effectively. You pick Fury on and it becomes very, very hard to play the game, if that makes sense, guys, right? You have to look at Dota from also like a, a wave shove perspective in high level games, because often the way you force plays is by clearing all the camps and then going for a play. So if the enemy can't clear camps or can't clear the waves or has to deal with treants to de-push towers, they're not going to be able to get aggressive. It's going to be very hard for them to do so. And so I love this Fury on pick here. I think it's so freaking good. You can also lane the Razor with the Warlock. That's a great pairing. Fatal Bonds of Plasma Field in the lane is a lot of damage. The sustain for Razor is really nice because this hero honestly does usually take quite a bit of damage when he's trying to static link early on. So this pairing is honestly a great lane duo as well. It, it really, really is. And finally, we see a Bristleback. And honestly, I was surprised to see this Bristleback. Like, very genuinely surprised. I, it just doesn't seem like a great Bristle game. If you don't buy Face Boots, you can get Sprout kited, which often Bristles don't. I, I would imagine he probably will against this team comp. A lot of Minus Armor, so he'll probably buy the Face, so it's not a problem. But I don't think you're good against Razor because of Static Link and the kiting. And uh, he buys AC and then he reduces armor and Bristle has no armor. You're, you're playing against like an armor reduction comp as a bristle and I mean, I don't know. I guess they picked it for like, I don't know. It's like a weird pick to me. I don't really feel like it creates space for Morphling. They needed a frontliner. So I guess they felt like, oh, we have this run in bristle. They probably just thought they could get away with it. Honestly, I kind of respect it because I think if they do get away with it, they have this really strong mid game hero that can run in against these heroes. But even then, I don't know if that's necessarily true, to be honest, because the Eye of the Storm armor reduction with Meld is going to put Bristle to zero very quickly. And then you're against three right click heroes. Like, it's a hard game to play for Bristle. It's hard for him to just run in. He can't run in. So I was a bit concerned by this pick. I thought the TA was kind of cool. I thought they might lack some team fight, honestly, with three just like right click cores, essentially. But um, that was definitely not the case. And yeah, let's get into the Fury on gameplay. All right, so we're going to be looking at an offlane Prophet here. And honestly, I like his starting items. Even though, honestly, Shaman and Morphling are both very, very high armor heroes. I think it's mostly about just being able to deny creeps reliably. Especially against the Shaman Morphling lane where they just simply don't have a good hero to deal uh, with Treants. You're going to be able to 50-50 every single creep with with almost no question um, so I like his build here and also I like that he's shoving in the wave a little bit I want you guys just to see this when you're playing a ranged hero in the laning stage even when you're playing a melee hero but sp especially when you're playing a ranged hero you need to auto attack the creeps a bit right you'll see him hit uh, the melee creep briefly there then secure the range and then go back to hitting the melee notice how this auto attacking it's it's not unintentional I want to be very clear with you guys if you're trying to get better this stuff is like the advanced stuff that really helps the lane as he, oh my gosh, the damage on the Morphling, that's crazy. I feel like Morphling is just not a good hero right now in general, but either way, I'll move on from that. Yeah, but you have to click the wave a bit. And the reason why is even here, he, you see how he threw that extra auto? The reason why is you do not want a wave doubled up on you. If a wave doubles up, you can't pressure the Morphling because every time you try to hit him, you're going to get beat down by a creep wave. It's really that simple. That's all you have to do to look at this and understand this concept. If you're a ranged hero and you want to pressure a little bit or trade at all, even if like, let's say it's a hard lane, right? The, the reason why it's even good in hard lanes is if they go on you and you have a double wave, it's kind of a disaster. On top of that, if that happens, they might hit level two first. And if you're laning against the Chaos Knight as Furion and you're not keeping the wave push, you're going to hit level two later than him, right? And then it's just GG. He's going to kill you for sure. So the next thing I want to discuss about Profit is briefly um, Faith Beyond's decision making. When it comes to first off his jungling like so you'll even see as ling begins to get worse over time against the morphling is you know he didn't have the greatest of of lanes honestly it, it didn't go quite well it, it went fine but it didn't go great what he's doing is he's actually jungling and this is something to keep in mind guys you can just dodge the lane as fury on it it's completely fine but the second thing to talk about here as well is you want to rotate basically only on your six timing i'll see a lot of profit players grief their games as we we'll watch him tp and big ulti on the two of them but I'll see a lot of Furion players TP in way before they should as we see a really nice Sprout to block off the Bristle with giving him no potential option for a Quelling Blade out. 
and they're gonna end up picking up this kill onto the bristle. Really, really well done from the Fury on. But yeah, I see a lot of players TPing in without their ulti. It's simply a mistake. I cannot make that more clear. It just, yeah, it's kind of just a grief. And even here, right? I want you guys to keep in mind, he doesn't just like instantly TP bottom, he starts to jungle. And this is the reality of Prophet. After you gank, you typically just jungle the area. The only time you should TP out is when you have your other TP back up. So you'll see he TPs base right about now. And that's nice because his regular TP was coming back up. His treants are now alive. I honestly don't understand why he's not summoning treants. Okay, he's waiting for level seven. That's why. There you go. So he's waiting for level seven, summons the treants. He's going to actually use them. Is he stacking? It's like he's going to stack with it. Oh, that's some really advanced stuff right there. Gotta love to see that. That's some, you know, that's some really nice stuff. Stacking for his DA. Uh, you know, Prophet is Prophet is one of those heroes, guys, where if you get good at it, it's a beautiful hero. You can stack, give vision with the treants, block camps. There's so much you can do with this hero uh, that players simply don't do because it takes a lot of thinking. But either way, once again, like I, I want you guys to see that really a big part of this hero is the ulti. Uh, and, and making plays around the ulti. Nothing too crazy happens here. Obviously, he clearly ultied in an attempt to defend this TA. Uh, but I, I even will say I kind of would have liked to see him hold it there. And the reason why is he didn't have very much vision of any waves. But most importantly, the reason why I'd like to see him hold it is when you TP in, you really want that burst damage to come out on whoever you go on. For instance, this Shaman would be like, let's say two or three autos away. Instead, he's like five or six, which is typically unpractical. Uh, to get. Thankfully, his team is in position to kill everyone off, so it didn't really matter, but just keep that idea in mind. After this fight breaks down, he's going to head off to the small camp and go back to the jungle. You might be thinking, Speed, why not push the tier 1 tower mid? Because you don't want to extend his profit. A lot of people have this horrible idea as Furion, that if they win a fight, or just in general, they have to push. No, you don't. You should scale, you should jungle. Your hero is one of the best farmers in Dota, hands down, right? This hero is ridiculous when it comes to its farming potential. Um, even here, we're actually going to see him sentry and it's funny enough to top push with the cart. That's pretty cool. Uh, but you don't have to push too early, right? That play beforehand, he probably felt that if he pushed a tower, he's going to get avalanche into a toss into a DP siphon and die. And that's realistically what would happen because you don't have any counter plays for you on. There's no play you can make to keep yourself alive. Even sprouting with a tango is not good enough in most situations. And you'll see that 80%, 80, 85, 90% of the game, he's going to be jungling the defensive camps on the map, especially early game, guys. The first 15 to 20 minutes into the game, you're often going to be doing this. The only time you shove waves really is when you start to get your shard, because then, um, and when I mean shove waves, I mean like hard shove them, like near the enemy tier two. Of course, you can clear it if it's if there's a wave next to you, right, under tier one, and it's near the camps you're farming. Of course, you should farm, right? Of course, right? That's just efficient. Um, however, you'll see he's largely just hitting neutrals, right? And, and people are like, oh, well, this is, this is, I can't do that. I'm an offlaner. My team would flame me. It's like, then get flamed. Just play the way that enables your hero. The problem is when you just fight all the time, Ms. Furion, and you, you're just going to fall behind. It's as simple as that. I, there's like no other. I want to come up with some crazy explanation, but there's no, there's nothing else to say. You just don't do anything as this hero if you, if you go that route. But yeah, also keep in mind, he skips his talent at level 10. Going for the max out teleport. I love this because honestly, the bringing it down to 20 seconds really feels nice. It really does feel like the difference here. But at this point of the game, he's got his vessel. He's ready to go. And this is his timing. And you'll see he's so freaking tanky. 15 armor, 1500 HP, even got a shovel, which is pretty cool. But he does TP into this fight. Bit of a weird engagement. Not looking too great to start. Really nice uh, Warlock Golem and Fatal Bonds. I guess not that great. There was no follow up. All right, it was pretty bad. <laughs> Um, but now you can see he's really holding on to this vessel. I love how he's not like using it too early. Once the bristle clearly is going to get trapped by the treants and Zing Q can uh, initiate here, he goes for it. On top of that, keep in mind early game when you don't have your shard, anytime you're sprouting someone, you should summon treants instantly behind them to block them. This bristle does have phase boots, so it's not necessarily that effective. But thankfully, in this case here, uh, the phase boots are on cooldown. And so the instant summon of the treants even though Bristle quelling the tree, it doesn't matter. You can get the tree in front and you can block regardless. And that's exactly what happens. Taking a really, really nice fight. And he gets two more vessel charges, which is obviously very important this game. I don't even feel like I have to explain why vessels good this game, but I'll briefly do it. It's the best item in the game against Morphling. Very good against Death Prophet Spirit Siphon. And Bristleback is largely a heal based hero. Even support tiny is very high HP. So the percentage based damage of vessel is quite good.
All right, next up, let's talk about split pushing and clearing waves, because honestly, that is his biggest advantage this game. So much so to the point where he even does what I typically don't do, which is take eight seconds nature's call cooldown. I've actually started to take 30 wrath of nature base damage. Um, and the reason why I like this talent is it helps you build up damage. Like, so basically it makes it more reliable for you to kill off the creeps that you're ulting, which is going to give you bonus damage on your right click. However, I think in this game, especially with the build he's going, it's not his job to right click. He's not going a, a Mjolnir, an AC, an Orchid, you know, that's obviously not what he's buying. And so taking the nature's cold cooldown, especially when it's this freaking good of a uh, of a split pushing game is fantastic, right? So I really agree with his decision in this case. And he's definitely going to take the tree and summon at level 15. I would be genuinely shell shocked <laughs> if, uh, if that's not uh, what he ends up going for. But you'll see when it comes to split pushing, here's what you do. It's very simple, okay? You, you don't want to just shove the wave your teammates can farm. That's not useful. You also don't need to shove what they will farm. You need to shove what they don't want to farm, okay? That is the main thing for split pushing that people don't get. They, they think like, oh, I should just clear, I don't know, any wave. It's, no, you can't do that. You need to clear the waves your teammates aren't farming to number one, create space for them. And number two, well, just not take their farm. Like, I don't know. <laughs> But you might be like, oh, but TA wants to farm this. The thing is, TA doesn't necessarily want to farm this. It's very dangerous. She doesn't want to get her BKB forced. And so instead, his trains are going to easily do this. He, they also see the mid here. So this is a fantastic situation for him to get these trains down this lane. Also, the quicker, the better. And the reason why the quicker, the better, you got to be fast. Because if you're not fast, if you're not decisive about your decision to summon trains, by the way, he's not showing. He didn't show at all. But you got to be fast is because... You, you need your TP to come back up, right? Even here, fight breaks out. He doesn't have his TP, but it's okay because it's coming back up in like one second and we'll see them take out the tiny. And yeah, he doesn't even look to TP in, but I love what he's doing to the map here. Uh, I mean, bottom side of the map is completely screwed. They're in a really horrible position. I mean, even here, I, they clearly make the quick call to back off. This is some really high skill stuff just from LGD as a, as a team. But now he gets the bottom wave all the way in, top wave all the way in. TA and Razor can farm the jungle comfortably. They're happy to do that. And the Furion can look to start to take the tier two tower as well as you can drag the top wave a little bit. And so, yeah, the map of Astra Ares is getting destroyed, right? They have very little control. They're getting split up like crazy. This enables the TA with her traps and the Earth Spirit to get pickoffs. And, and on top of that, look, I mean, they just, honestly, I think this was a clear outdraft on LGD. I'm, I'm honestly, I, I'm mostly shocked about the, the Bristle pick. I think this hero is honestly good. I do. And I get it. Like, I like the hero and I like his item build this game. But I don't know. I just feel like they just didn't pick a hero that can clear waves quickly. They have no one. And I cannot stress it enough. And so you might be wondering, what are heroes? What are heroes that you don't like playing against speed? Well, it's it's bots heroes. So Batrider, Ember Spirit, or just something like Ember Spirit because of, of, of Remnant. Kunkka, Timbersaw, heroes that just comfortably run down lanes. Even something like Beastmaster to send Hawks down the lane and and axes and, and units to clear through is is pretty good too. Pangolier is an annoying one for me. So it's like these heroes that can clear waves very quickly and, and then reconnect with their team. You don't, I mean, Bristle's okay, but it's it, the quills take a bit of time to kill off the trains, right? You can see here as the trains, funny enough, get literally healed by a, an AOE Warlock shard, you can't kill him, right? I mean, it kills him eventually, but like, you can see how slow it is, right? It's slow. And you might be like, oh, it's only three or four seconds speed. That is slow. That's slow. In fact, it's not three or four seconds. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. It's like 10 seconds because it's like three quills, right? That's extremely slow, right? But keep in mind, after the fights break down, notice how he's not forcing in crazy engagements. You're not diving towers. You're not trying to take their tier twos and tier threes. I mean, you can take the tier twos if they're fighting, but you're not over forcing. You're looking to farm your next item. Gets this vessel here. Uh, I mean, it completes this Wraith Pact, obviously an insane Dota 2 item, still very, very powerful. And really why I like this build so much is how just inherently tanky it makes you, right? He has so much freaking EHP. When he's going to get this Wraith Pact in a moment, you'll see what I'm talking about. 1900 HP. Wraith Pact gives a crazy amount of HP. I think it's about 250. Yeah, 250. It's a really high amount of HP when you complete the item. And all of a sudden, my man is tanky. He's high armor, high HP, only lacks a bit of magic resist. I've even seen Pipe as the next item, and it's quite comical how tanky your hero actually can become. But yeah, even, even another thing that I... I I really like that he does here. He's really min-maxing the hero. I, I love that he does all the, the different strategies. But you can see he's sending the trains around the map. Just I think he's just like next unit tabbing, F tabbing, shift tabbing, whatever it's called. 
Um, he's just sending them all throughout the jungle. Look at this. They just have complete vision. They know exactly what the enemy team is doing. And this is going to allow them to potentially set up their next play, right? They could be like, okay, Bristol's bottom, a couple heroes top. We can smoke and run at them if we want. I mean, we have complete vision. And that's exactly what they do. They smoke and they have complete vision. Unfortunately, they messed up their initiation. But yeah, they just have complete vision. And now it's just a really simple team fight. Throw out the Wraith Pact onto the Bristle. Throw down the um, Vessel onto the Bristle. Completely trap them with trains. Oh my gosh. It's honestly, I, I would say it's a good play, but I'm going to keep it real with you guys. When you hit level 15, and this is honestly the nice thing about this Treant-based talent build, it's so easy to tree and trap people. If you just click it anywhere remotely of the center of, of the sprout, that's all you have to do, right? You, you TP in, right? You sprout, and then you click the middle of the sprout. Even if you're just like close, you'll get you'll trap them, right? You just have to be close, and it's so good. And honestly, my next item, or the item that I typically buy when I'm going this exact aura build, or like team fight build, is drums. And the reason why is when you tree and trap a support, for instance, a shaman, if he TPs on Shaman and traps him and summons Treants, Shaman insta dies to Treants. I'm not kidding. It's like so fast. So you just solo kill supports and you're tanking and you have utility items that are cheap, by the way. I mean, he's obviously very farmed. You know, he's obviously very farmed. But still, I mean, con considering how effective these items actually are, it's, you know, he's super useful. Right? And he's tankier than you usually would be. No BKB is obviously a bit of a problem. So you have to be a little bit careful about, you know, getting chains done and getting nothing off. But either way, beautiful fight from Faith Beyond. And yeah, now they have the trains to siege the high ground. And they actually just straight up call it. <laughs> it's uh, it's a horrible game now. And, and honestly, I love the Furion as well for the vision game it provides for the trains that we talked about earlier. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I love talking about Furion. It's so fun for me. I love this hero so much. It's it's honestly just beautiful. I, I Yeah, there's nothing else for me to say. But all right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And well, peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.